for all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions, or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success, and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics.com and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Man, show we here. Our special guest, my buddy, CEO of Precision Time, Mike Costaville, out on the show. My man, he's always keeping a gangster with me all the time with their tournaments. What's good, money, Mike? <laughs> How you doing, Jr.? You having a good day? Hey, man, I cannot complain, man. It's March Madness still here in the ATL. It's sunny, getting warmer. I'm happy as the as can be, man. Yeah, I think you were telling me that you're going to be going to Memphis tomorrow. I sure am. I'll be there for the. I'll see our man, Coach Cal, the, the original gangster out there, Coach Cal and Lonzo Ball. We're going to see some gangsters yeah, I was gonna, tomorrow. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got what, uh, is it UCLA's out there? And Kentucky. you have uh, Kentucky, Butler, is North Carolina out there as well? I think it's, I think it's uh, yeah, North Carolina, I think it is. Yeah, Carolina, uh-huh. And, and I believe the other team is what, Butler? Butler, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not, uh, again, I'm not, not trying to forget anybody, you know how this this can be. But no, um, and they're playing in the uh, where the uh, Memphis Grizzlies play in that FedEx facility, Ford. correct? Yeah, yeah. And like you know, you and I have talked about our, our technology, uh, 
that's being used and as far as system and everything. It's, it's just our new system now has the ability to tell you exactly what happened in an event and actually time stamp it. So if anybody starts or stops the game clock or with a belt pack or if it's a, a you know, timekeeper or any type of error, it actually records it. So that's the, the new thing that uh, they'll be using. And they've probably been using it for the last two uh, basketball tournaments. And the NCAA, the NBA has been using it for years, but the NCAA is now using it, uh, uh, especially with the data, they're using it more and more in the past two seasons. You know, Mike, this is what is my biggest thing about the technology, Mike, is this, that I see the clock run down farther than it should. They put time back on the clock. And does that make your system look bad, or is that on the timekeeper for letting it go too far and the whistle being blown too fast? And oh, What's going on with that when they got to go and put time back on the clock after they blow the whistle and stops the clock? Okay, that's a very good point. What happens sometimes is that when the you know they blow the whistle and call a foul, the precision time stops the clock. It tracks it. It tells us who did it. And in the, throughout the tournament, where and even in the NBA, you know, the precision time stops the clock. But sometimes the official will go look at the monitor and go back to the actual point of the infraction. I kind of have a hard time with that because if they're going to do that, they need to do that through the course of the game. But they'll go in the last minute or maybe two minutes, uh, and especially I've seen it more in, in NCAA play, uh, that they'll go put time on the clock. I'm not sure if that's a rule, if that's a directive, but um, because we track the data, we know that the system is stopping the clock, but some sports officials will go back and go to the point of the infraction. And to me, I would go up there and say, which whistle stopped the clock if it was belt pack one, two, or three, or whatever belt pack number they're wearing. I would say that's what we have. But then there may be a directive. I'm not sure, but I can tell you our system is working. It's working fine. Um, and it actually, like I said, it tracks. Now, in that same vein, Mike, with the tracking, now, of course, hell, officials can now track, see what files the officials call and, and review the tape along with the data that Precision Time sends off to say, hey, that wasn't a foul at 5.15 in the fourth quarter. That wasn't a foul in the third quarter. So can official, head officials use your system to help pinpoint missed calls as well and help their officials grow as officials and become better officials going forward? Well, to answer that question, I don't know whether you want to start talking about judgment plays of somebody missing a play or not missing a play, but every time the whistle is blown or if the timekeeper stops the clock, it gives you the opportunity to go back and see what took place and what happened during that event. It doesn't become a mystery. We're not trying to uh, solve the, uh, you know, the Warren commission on who shot JFK. I'm just saying we, we, we now have data. We can go back and figure out what happened and, and go to that point. But when it comes to if an official missed a play or not, the thing that what we can do is we can go back and see which official blew the whistle. And, yes, it can be used as a, uh, as a teaching tool. But on the other hand, it doesn't really tell us whether an official got the play right or wrong you can go back to that point and see who exactly blew the whistle. And sometimes, and our system will tell you, like, if you blow your whistle and then I have a whistle right behind you, say, because you call a foul and we have what we call a double whistle, I'm able to go back to that information and see who else call or who else had a whistle on that play. Because it also tells us when my whistle was blown and there's a delta timer there that tells you the difference between the two times. So it's it's again it's a very very good tool, uh, but back to your plays again. Not to be redundant, it's not going to tell you whether I missed a play or not. It's just going to tell you who blew the whistle. Now, when you go to look at the videotape as an official or as an observer, then you have data to where you know exactly where those whistles came from. So we're not it's not a phantom. Gotcha, folks. We have Mike Costa Bill here for two season time on here. The general the boss. So take about technology of basketball, innovation of the game. Now, Mike, we have your technology. Now, do you feel like this, that the shot clock should maybe be shortened, maybe, or put the clock in a different spot so guys can see it more? Because I see the we had to have it on the back of the, of the, of the, of the backboard now and the, the, the goal. But I, it's like 
if you're in the corner, you can see it. But if you're at the top of the key, you really can't see it on that side of it there. If you're on the wing, maybe. So do you feel like they can move the, move the, move the clock position maybe a little bit more? And also, do you want them to maybe change the clock to how, how the game is played? Maybe 24 seconds shot clock, 10-minute quarters. How do you feel about that, man? Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, again, dealing with international basketball, which we do, as well as the NBA and NCAA, uh, the NBA does 12-minute quarters. The NCAA women's do 10-minute quarters. The NCAA men's, they're doing 20-minute halves. Uh, so the thing about, let's go back to the clock positioning. If you look at the clocks when you go to the NBA arenas, the way that uh, they're put up there, uh, and Steve Helmuth and a bunch of others that were involved with uh, the technology, we're talking about the NBA, you'll see your game clock is facing the court, and then there's one on the side that faces so if you're shooting a shot from a jump shot from the corners, you're able to see those. So the visibility of the game clocks, and we're talking about the NBA, every NBA arena you go to is consistently the same. Mm-hmm. Now, when you get involved with with, um, with NCAA play, some facilities are not, or some of these games are not played in NBA venues. So they may not have the same clock set up where they may have what they call like a three-sided shot clock and game clock that's above the basket where it's different than what we do, you know, what's going on in the NBA. But, um, you know, they've, they've reduced it to 30 seconds. That is intended in NCAA play to speed. It looks like it's supposed to speed up the play. Um, it, it's all, with, with what we do, it's all kind of relative, whether it's 30 seconds or 24 seconds. The main thing back to what our stuff does is – it actually tracks. It lets us know what took place in each one of the events, as well as starting and stopping the clock. We're able to audit. But again, back to your question about positioning of the clocks, if you look at the way the NBA has it, they really study situations and problems, and they go out and they address it and they fix it. So whenever I see them playing game, you know, whenever I watch NBA games, it's really great because they are very, very consistent. When it comes to high school and possibly college and even some FIBA situations, sometimes their arenas are not all the same. But when you go like where you're going to Memphis, you're going to see that the shot clocks and game clocks are pretty consistent. Or even like when we were at the SEC tournament, mm-hmm. the, the game clocks and shot clocks there, JR, are positioned uh, just like the NBA. So it's they're very, very visible. And even the three-sided shot clock game clocks are very visible, but I think the NBA has come down, has really taken it to a science and uh, has done a very good job with it. Now, as being a former official, Mike, do you just watch the games and think about how you would call a play or, or when they should have went this way? You just kind of just only on the technology side now. Like, that's out of your system now. You've done to be a referee. Forget all that. I'm about the technology now. I don't care how you all call the game anymore. Well, to answer that question, I do watch the game clocks and shot clocks because of the technology that, that you know we've developed. But on the other side of it, is, and I will say this as a former basketball referee in the NBA and doing collegiate games, we still all have a tendency to still referee the game in our minds. So when I watch the game, I have to admit, I'll sit there and go, that's a foul or that's not a foul. So I still have a habit of doing that. But um, And I think any former basketball referee who probably watches a game, whether it's high school, college, um, you know, Peewees, whatever you want to call it, we, we all probably still have tendencies to referee a game. Heck, I've sat in the stands with you, and you're over there refereeing a game, and I don't know if you've ever refereed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never done it in my life, but I've tried to when I can. <laughs> no, but I've seen you over there going, man, that, that's not a foul. And I've seen you do it. I'm going to go, well, JR, you're probably right. It's not a foul. But see, the thing about it is, is we have the luxury of being in, in sometimes – in the best spot to see a play, even though that we're sitting over in the corner somewhere. Yeah. So the play is like right in front of us. And sometimes a sports official can be out on the court. And if they're not in that same exact spot, they don't see the whole thing. And sometimes if as a referee, if you see the second part of an act is pretty much what you'll end up calling. So you try to see the whole play. And again, when you're referee and you think about this, you're watching the game clock, the shot clock, you're 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 managing these ten players. You're you're just 
your mind's got a whole bunch of things that you're trying to process, and then you you want to call fouls. You want to make sure that the game stays, it, it, you know, you give it a a tempo so that the game flows. But yeah, as a former basketball referee, I have to admit when I'm sitting there watching the game, I do have a tendency to say, you know, that's a foul, or that may not be a foul, and that's a walk. So we all have a tendency to to still referee. So. I got a feeling most fans do the same thing too, but as a referee, I look at the game a little bit different or as a former referee. Now, Ash, as a former referee, what was the magic word to get somebody teed up from you? Oh, <laughs> there's a few magic words. <laughs> but there's, there's, there's some magic words that can get you teed up, and then there's some magic words that can get you ejected. So, you know, if somebody comes up to you and just says certain things to you, Again, it's on the approach. And you think about it. If somebody comes up to you, JR, and says something to you and you understand the person, you're probably not going to do anything. But if they come at you in such a way that they're embarrassing you and then they throw out a few uh, expletives, then you're going to you're gonna tee them up. The problem is when you tee them up, you got to make sure that when you do that, and what I'm seeing now is that everybody in the whole facility sees what happens. And, and you have fans who feel like no matter what happens, their team has done no wrong. It's kind of like children. You have a couple of children, and if they don't, they don't, you don't see them doing anything wrong, you're going to sit there and defend them. Exactly. Where when you go referee, and it's a, it's a different story because you're, you're dealing with so many different personalities. And that's, what, that's one thing like when you with, with videotape and replays, we can watch replays all day long, but unless you're out on the court seeing how these plays develop and the personality of the players, you don't really see that in a replay. Does that make sense what I'm saying to you? It, it does. It does. Yeah. So you don't – yeah, you don't – it's like last night there was a game uh, where I was – what was it? A couple nights ago it was what Chicago was playing in Toronto. You oh, yeah, that was, some, yeah, that was some funny stuff there. That Ibaka okay. Lopez fight. Exactly, but see, the only way to find out what really took place to create that altercation is you need to go back five, six, seven plays and see what developed to bring it to that point. And unless you're out there referee in that game and understanding those personalities, it could have been something very subtle that happened six plays ago that slowly brought it to that point. So that's why sometimes you know when you see people show replays you only see that one part of it. You don't see what brought it to that point. And as a referee, you just pay attention to players and tendencies. And if you start to see that develop, that's where my opinion is as a very good referee, you have to be a very cognizant person of what's going on out there. And if you see that, you can put that out. You can damper that fire. But sometimes if you don't catch it quick enough, then you have an altercation. And that's what you don't want. So that goes back to, okay, like you and I are sitting in the stands and we're, you know, I still sometimes will referee. You just have to pay attention to players. And sometimes we as officials, we don't do that. Or we may be not thinking about that or not thinking that's going to happen, but well, that's one of the biggest things that I learned as an NBA referee was to understand players' tendencies and understand their personalities because they do things a little bit different. Best believe that. And, Mike, a final question for you this, man. Uh, I went to Greenville on Sunday after going to Georgia Tech's game early that day to see my man Coach Martin play Coach K in Duke. Have you ever seen a crowd? Yeah, what do you think of so pro against Duke in your life, like that crowd was so. The Carolina fans were cheering, cheering for South Carolina, like to cheer them on. Like it's like a ninety percent Carolina crowd over Duke, and I like a South Carolina home game almost. And seeing Coach Martin get emotional, these guys play so hard for him in, in their home state, man. What do you think? Seeing that this, those, those guys rise up and get that done by beating the Almighty Duke from Durham, North Carolina, which you be a Chapel Hill guy yourself. Well, see, I grew up in Durham, Chapel Hill. I grew up right on the borderline of Durham and Chapel Hill. Uh, and my parents still live in the same house I grew up in today. And uh, it's really interesting. Sometimes, you know, when, when you grow up there, you're either a Duke, Carol, Duke fan or Carolina fan. And I'll be honest with you, um, 
I wasn't there for the game, so I'm not trying to dodge your question, but I could see the Carolina fans because they're not Duke fans and to see that if they have the opportunity to witness <laughs> Duke lose a game or vice versa, I could just see that going on. So there's there's no love lost between those two. And you have to understand, think about this, North Carolina lost to Duke twice this year. They played three times, and two of them, they won the one in Chapel Hill, but I believe they lost in Durham and they lost the ACC tournament. So for, for them to see that they wouldn't have to uh, possibly play Duke somewhere down the road. That's just a, it's just a typical rivalry, man. You think about that. It's, it's, it's probably no different than, uh, you, know, you take your other, you take your other rivalries that, that, that you've seen over the years. Uh, let's think of another rivalry. That's probably like that. Uh, that's just as crazy. Uh, that that's a big one. I'm trying to think. Of Auburn, Alabama. Oh hey, yeah. Auburn, Alabama. I guarantee it. If the Alabama fan, if Auburn fans do the Alabama, lost the game in football and they had a chance to go to say the SEC championship because Alabama lost. I'm just using this hypothetically. Don't you think those people would probably go out and, and sure. celebrate in the streets? Sure would. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, I mean, you know, it's just, it's one of the, it's one of those games where I think it's, there, there's other rivalries too. You know, like South, South Carolina, Clemson. No, there's no love lost there either in, in those sporting events. So it's and it's probably good to have it as long as nobody gets carried away. Hey, Michael, thank you as always, brother. You, you're a class act, man. I really appreciate, appreciate you coming on the show, brother, anytime, man. Anytime, I appreciate you having me, JR, and I'll talk to you later. All right, now. Thanks. Shane All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions, or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success, and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.DraftDayConsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Hip-hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip-hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, IllStreetRex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech, and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academics.com. 
academics and athletics consulting.com or you can follow me on Facebook at academics and athletic consulting or Twitter at coach T wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L Williams 24 or you can call me at 404-542-607 once again AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you.